Choose your host, change your game. If you own a premium, that is, because if you own a pro, you ain't changing shit. What's up, guys, and welcome back to my channel where I talk and do everything pinball. Now, as you're more than likely well aware, Stern revealed and released their latest title, Venom. And I did a about a two-hour stream today and uh, going over my sort of thoughts and opinions on it, but it was merely me learning the game. The same time, a lot of you were learning the game as well when it comes to layout and what it looks like and all that. So now that I've had a little bit more time to muster over it, look through the videos and get a better idea, I wanted to give my initial first impressions of what I think about the game before we get our first stream, which should be tomorrow, July 19th, via Dead Flip. So, as of right now, I'm going to tell you this. Due to the nature of the layout on this game, because it's a fan layout, pretty standard, I feel like it's going to be highly dependent on what the code's going to allow us to do. Because there's nothing fancy about the layout, nothing original, doesn't... We don't really know how well it flows due to the the way they put these trailers and videos together. You don't really get a, get a great idea how the game plays because there's so many cuts. And this is something that really aggravates me. And I had to look at some videos on this. But if you watch the game trailer for Venom, there are over 60 different cuts that have been done in the editing process. For this one minute and eight second video. Now, out of curiosity, I decided to look at Foo Fighters. Granted, it's about the same. Not a drastic difference, but the difference between the two games and game trailers is that how it was filmed and edited on Foo Fighters, you had a much better idea of how the game shot. They had some better footage to show you how the ball travels along the playfield versus what we're seeing on Venom, I'm pretty sure a lot of you could agree when you watch the minute and eight second clip that they showed us from the very beginning to reveal their game. I was kind of like going, what did I just watch? Because it was just so much, so quickly, that it was a little bit difficult to process. That might just be the old me kicking in though. Maybe I've gotten to that age now to where things just need to be slowed down. So that might be what it is. But looking at the game, I think a little bit of the contributor for so much is that there is a lot of color on this game. This might be the most colorful game that Zombie Yeti has done to date. All I know is that when I'm looking at the art, the play field, and as it's going through, it seems highly saturated. Now, whether that be due to the editing process done in the when they're doing the post editing, adding saturation to the video, very possible. So it may not be as saturated in person, but that's yet to be seen. All we've got to go by is these, these videos that they're showing us. So who knows? But all I know is that when you're looking down at that play field, it's a lot to take in. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of inserts. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of color. That's a lot of nuts. There's a lot of everything. Especially since there's so much of a canvas right there in front of you. Because everything that you're going to be shooting at, aside from the two side stand-up targets, is in that back third. And a fan. I do feel at this time that the Pro is definitely going to be stripped down in comparison to the Premium. You're missing quite a few good-sized mechs that really changed the way the game plays, especially since one of the main themes for this game is to choose your host, change the game. Technically, that only bodes well for those that got the premium in the LE. That's the only physical change that's going to take place for you on the Pro. Sorry. On the Pro, you're not going to get any physical changes. So no matter who you choose, the play field is going to play the same. If you get a premium or the LE, you choose your host, that's going to physically change the layout of the game. Those mechs will move accordingly to different positions. You're going to get a different and, I think, a better experience. 
Now, versus the pro, the only thing that's going to change is, of course, like it did on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, when it comes to choosing what turtle you want to play as. This one, you choose which type of symbiote you want to play as. It's going to change the scoring and perks and stuff like that. That's what's going to be changing is merely the code, nothing physical. So when I feel what makes this game interesting, the only thing that really makes this game interesting and unique is for the premium because that's where you're getting the the doppelganger or the doppeldangler mech that comes out that you don't I don't think I've ever seen that in a game before. I'm kind of curious how well that's going to hold up. You've got the other mech that basically has three different positions. That's what really changes the way the game plays as well as the ramp that goes up and down to the right of that scoop. So then you also have an extra, there's just so much more in the premium versus your pro. And I think that the pro, as they always do design the pros to be for location pins, less mechs, makes for easier maintenance, and increases the chances of that game working 100% for the customers out there. So take it for what it's worth. Do you want mainly just the Venom theme with a fan layout with nothing fancy? Or do you want to go with the premium where you actually get the full experience and something different than any other pro that Stern has to offer? And of course, with the Venom theme. The wife just came in and screwed up my role that I was on for her talking about this game, so I really don't know where I left off. So... I may have to just re-record this entire session right here when it comes to what you're getting on your pro versus your premium. There's just a couple of hardcore facts that some of you are just going to have to deal with here. And that is, one, the game is definitely very bright and colorful, and that is on purpose because Yeti always says that he wants these games to be something that sticks out in a lineup if you're going to like a pub or whatever, an arcade, and you see a row of pinball machines, he wants his games to stick out. I guess the only downside to that is that every game that the arcade has, if they're going to be Zombie Yeti games, then technically they're all going to stand out. Or would they technically all blend in since they're all the same? And just so we're clear, I'm not dissing the art. Jeremy, you did great. I'm just saying that this is the first package uh, that you've done that I've looked at and been like, whoa, that's a lot. You've done a lot of work on this machine. It's crazy. But the premium has all the innovative parts in it. The Pro doesn't have any innovations, nothing different that we haven't seen before or experienced before. Your premium is going to have all of that, while your Pro is just another fan layout stern with the Venom theme over it. Now, again, this is before I've seen how it plays. I, that's, it's difficult for me to get a good idea of how it plays due to the kind of videos that they put out for us to view. So I will definitely putting up a post stream video, maybe tomorrow night, maybe not. We'll have to see how things go on my schedule. So as of right now, these are just the thoughts that are going through my head with this game. All I know is that as of right now, I do not have the excited and giddy feeling I had for Foo Fighters whenever it was first revealed. So this is going to be one of those games where it's definitely, I'm going to wait and see. I want to see how it plays to really get a good idea if the game's going to be any good. And we should get that tomorrow. Should be a good crowd. Let me know what your thoughts about Venom are in the comments section down below. So as much as I would love to go through the videos, like, you know, step by step, the 25% speed, it's 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 going to be irrelevant in a matter of a few hours due to the stream. But there's one thing that really stuck out to me, and I don't know why, but I wanted to get you guys' opinion on this as well. It's the method at which the person playing this Venom machine pulls the plunger i have never seen someone pull a plunger like this and for one thing to go along with it the editor felt like they had to put a cut right here to do a quick little zoom out we'll just add that to another cut out of the other 60 that they that we've done but aside from that 
I've just never done the whole pull the plunger back. That's so strange. I've got to try that. That's just weird. I don't know. Is is it me? Am I the only one? Have you guys ever pulled up? Do you? What? I mean, it's hard for me to explain how I pull a plunger. Let's just use. I got I got a Phillips head screwdriver right here. The typical way that I would pull the plunger. This is gonna be weird. I don't know. I, I feel like I should. I just pull it back like that and then let go. I mean, that method right there. Am I strange? Am I weird? 